Although you may not want to cuddle a bumblebee or butterfly, you may be surprised to learn that more than one-third of our global food supply depends on pollinators. In the last day you've likely eaten food, worn affordable cotton clothing, or powered your car thanks to products helped along by these fantastic creatures. A large amount of our world's biodiversity relies on the services pollinators provide, and many animals depend on the fruits and seeds they help create to survive. You can join Plant, Grow, Fly by creating much-needed pollinator habitat at your home, school, or even place of work. Our expertly researched garden recipes will help you plant the flowers and grasses that benefit local species the most. Our easy-to-follow recipes can be formed to your landscaping needs, from pet-friendly to sweet-smelling, low budget to no expenses spared. Gardens can range from several plants in a pot to a whole backyard ecosystem. Once you register your garden with Blank Park Zoo, you can order a Plant Grow Fly sign to proudly display in your new habitat, showing your support of our Midwestern pollinators. The mission of Plant Grow Fly is to encourage citizens and organizations to become aware of pollinator issues and to take action to preserve them. The vision of Plant Grow Fly is that we believe that our native pollinators provide not only economic and practical benefits to humans, but that they have intrinsic value in their own right. We believe that no effort is too small and that each of us can help make a difference to protect the biodiversity around us. Now, here's Nathan Brockman of Ryman Gardens with information on how you can plant your garden. When planning your garden, there's a few different things you need to take into consideration. One of the first ones is how much light the area receives. You want at least six hours of sun during the day so that your plants can really grow and bloom out nicely. Now you want to pay attention to the drainage of the area. It's important for the area to drain nicely so that the plants don't sit too long in moisture and the roots rot out. It's also a good idea for a pollinator garden to have an area where there's a little bit of blocking from the wind. Now you don't want too much wind blowing through. It disturbs the butterflies and the bees as they're going about pollinating and visiting the flowers. No size garden is too small. As long as you have at least one host plant and one nectar plant, you've got a good sized garden. But the bigger you can do and the more host plants and nectar plants you can have, the better it'll be. When choosing your plants for your garden, it's a good idea to select natives as much as possible. They are adapted to this area, they're used to our adverse climate changes, and our native insects evolved alongside them, so they'll do very well together. When you're laying out your garden, there's a few things you need to take into consideration when you're doing the design. It's always a good idea to put your smallest plants in the front and then kind of build up to your bigger plants in the back. So if you're doing a round flower bed, your tallest stuff in the middle and your shortest stuff to the sides. For host plant selection, I would never put a host plant right along the edge. It's a good idea to tuck host plants in your gardens themselves. As the caterpillars do their job and eat those host plants, essentially it's going to turn into nothing but a stick and you want to have the flowering plants kind of fill that in. It's also nice for the caterpillars because as those host plants are tucked in other plants, it's harder for predators to find them and eat them, which means you'll have more survivability of your caterpillars in the gardens. As you're laying out your nectar plants, what you'll want to do is plant in clusters of three to five. That's a good general design practice when you're laying out any flower garden. But it's also a good idea that when you're planting plants, to plant a lot of the same type of flower. Because with butterflies especially, they have to learn how to feed from one type of flower. And they'll go a lot faster feeding if they can go from the same type of flower to the same type of flower. If they have to switch between, say, like a penta to a lantana, they'll have to relearn how to feed as they're going about their day nectaring from the flowers. When it comes time to get your plants, there's a variety of ways you can go. You can start your seeds early, from seed packets, and you can plant them inside. You can start them in a, in a seed tray like this and create yourself a lot of small plants that you can then transfer. Or you can get your seeds, like so, and you can plant them into a larger tray. Just poke yourself a hole into some nice soil, put your seed in, cover it up, and water. This will give your plants a nice head start, and then when it comes time, you can transplant them outside. The other way that you can start your seeds is just plant them directly into your soil outside. And what you want to do there is really prepare the soil, till it up, loosen it up a bit, 
and then you can just take your seed packet, go outside, and then just individually plant your seeds into the actual space where you want them to grow. Now anytime you're planting annuals or perennials directly into the ground, it's going to take some time for them to grow up from seed. Some plants grow a lot faster. You can expect your annuals to grow and bloom in one season really well. Where if you plant any perennials, especially from seed, don't expect a lot from them the first year because it takes them time to grow and then they won't bloom most likely until the next year. So it's also possible that you can just go to your local greenhouse and buy yourself some plugs. Plants they've already started from seed in the greenhouse and then transfer them. What you'll want to do is take the plants carefully out of the plugs. You can dig your small holes where you want them to go and then just insert the plugs in the ground. This will give the plants a nice head start when it comes time for them to grow outside. Anytime you start something from seed, it's going to take a lot longer to grow. If you can get yourself a plug of the plant or an already started plant that may be a little bit farther along, especially if you want to plant perennials, you're going to have a lot more success your first year. It's perfectly okay for a lot of the host plants to plant them from seed because they grow quite fast and will fill in really quick. But especially if you're going to do some of your flowering plants and you want them to be nice and large the first year, your best bet is to buy them as either a plug or in a larger pot, like a six inch or a gallon pot. Another thing you can do is just go to the Plant Grow Fly page on the blankparkzoo.com website and get yourself a mixed seed packet. The seed packet will be a mixture of host plants and nectar plants. You would just have to loosen up the soil on your garden and then just spread them all around. And you'll actually get a grouping of a mixture of the flowers growing up in the space. So if you decide you want to start with something like a potted plant, go visit your local garden center. They're all going to have an assortment of host plants and nectar plants available to you. But what you want to do is really be an informed consumer. You want to ask the good questions. Were the plants grown locally? Are they a native variety, if possible? And then what sort of insecticides are applied to those plants? Because we want to have a nice base, a nice safe place for our butterflies to come and feed and lay their eggs. And if they use reduced pesticides, it's just going to be better for your garden as a whole, attracting and raising caterpillars. If you need a list of garden centers in your area that have agreed to plant their plants more friendly for the butterflies, you can visit the Plant Grow Fly page on the Blank Park Zoo website and there will be a list there that you can use.